Welcome to the newest installment of the Untitled Film Nerd Project. My name is Philip, and joining me as always is Teacher. Hello. And for this episode, we watched Deadpool 2. Before we get into it, spoiler warning now. If you want to avoid spoilers, skip ahead to the time code you see on the screen. So let's get directly into this kind of big cast and crew rundown. This was directed by David Leach. Leach? Leach? He is known for John Wick, uh, Atomic Blonde, and now Deadpool 2. He is replacing Tim Miller, who did not come back to direct Deadpool 2 after having creative differences with Ryan Reynolds. Uh, The reason behind it is varied on both sides, but uh, he didn't return. Let's get into the actual cast. Deadpool, a.k.a. Wade Wilson, was Ryan Reynolds. He was in Deadpool 1, The Voices, Green Lantern, Buried, X-Men, Origins Wolverine, etc., etc., etc. Two guys, a girl, and a pizza place. Oh, God. <laughs> God. Oh, God. If I just got slapped in the face by bad nostalgia. Wait, I did. Ugh. Shame on you. Tainting, tainting the <laughs> show already. Hey, that's where he got his origins. So. Uh, no, X-Men. Wolverine is where he got his origins. <laughs> ha. <laughs> Moving on. Right. Hey, you started it. Cable was Josh Brolin. Uh, he's been Thanos in Avengers Infinity War, Age of Ultron, Guardians of the Galaxy. He's also been in True Grit, Milk, and one of my favorite movies ever, No Country for Old Men. Among many, many, many other movies. Uh, returning as Vanessa was Marina Bakarin. She was in Deadpool 1, and I know her from Gotham and Firefly and Serenity. Oh. Yep. I believe she was the companion. Yeah, I never made that connection. That's awesome. Inara. And now, like every other nerd person ever, I'm like sad that we did get a season two. Yeah, I knew it. All right, moving on to other things. Fire Fist was Julian Dennison. He has been in Shopping, Paper Planes, uh, The Hunt for Wilder People, which is where he got discovered, actually, for this. Hmm. And upcoming, he has Godzilla vs. Kong. Cool. Which sounds right up your alley. Yes, yes. Then we had Domino. That was Zazie Beats, who has the most fucking awesome name ever. Uh, yeah, yeah. Totally <laughs> <laughs> she was in Geostorm, the TV series Atlanta. And upcoming, she's going to be in the Joaquin Phoenix Joker movie. Returning as Weasel, we have T.J. Miller, who was in Deadpool 1, Cloverfield, Ready Player 1, and will not be returning for Deadpool 3 because he's a fucking idiot. Mm -hmm. Seriously, famous dudes in Hollywood, just keep it in your fucking pants. Yeah. Like, come on. Good God. Like, what an idiot. Just moving on. Uh, Blind Al was Leslie Uggams, and she's been around forever. But she was also, of course, in Deadpool 1. She's been in a ton of TV stuff, like from the 70s, the 80s, the 90s. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I know her from Roots back in 77. Okay. Yeah, she was back in that. I thought it was really fucking cool. The always adorable Dope Ender was Karan Sony. He was in Deadpool 1, Creep 2, and Safety Not Guaranteed. It's interesting that he was in Creep 2 and Safety Not Guaranteed because both of those have Mark Duplass in them. So maybe they're friends. And when I saw Creep 2, I was like, oh, that's right. That's who you were. Okay. I don't remember him at all. In uh, without spoiling the movie, I think he was the first guy in the beginning. Oh, yes. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Negasonic Teenage Warhead was Brianna Hildebrand. Uh, she, was, of course, was in Deadpool 1. She has been in the Exorcist TV show. And, of course, we know her as well from Tragedy Girls. Mm-hmm. Now we're going to go into some rapid-fire notables. Because, I yeah, there's a lot of people. Black Tom was Jack Casey. The headmaster was Eddie Marsan. Yukio, who's also adorable, mm-hmm. was Shioli Kutsuna. Peter was Rob Delaney. Shatterstar was Louis Tan. Zeitgeist was the gorgeous Bill Skarsgård. Everyone should know who that is. Bedlam was the always awesome Terry Crews. Mm-hmm. I fucking love Terry Crews. He's so cool. Vanisher was Brad Pitt. And then in two minor roles that I did not recognize at all, Redneck number one was Alan Tudyk. And redneck number two was Matt Damon. Oh, shit. <laughs> right? Right? That, that's awesome. Right? And that is... The ones that we're talking about toilet paper. <laughs> yes. I'm going to reference that later because yes. Yes. I, <laughs> yes. 
So unless you have anyone else to add, that is cast and crew rundown. Uh, no, no. All right, so cast and crew is done. Let's get into our initial thoughts. Initial thoughts. What did you think? Oh, I loved it. I went to the theater and saw it. Oh, that's right. That's right. Loved the shit out of it. Ew. It wasn't trying to top the first one. Like, I mean, if anything, I'd say they're about equal. Mm-hmm. And just again, I got exactly what I wanted. This entertaining as hell and um, a comic book movie that embraces the fact that it's a comic book movie. Oh, yeah, definitely. Even on an extreme meta level. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Which, again, is embracing the Deadpool comic. Mm-hmm. And... And I loved the casting. Domino was fucking awesome. Yeah, I thought that was a very inspired choice. Yeah. To go that way. I like that. I know a lot of people had a problem with it, but I've... she was fantastic. Because she wasn't um, white? Well, yeah. Um, That's not dumb. because she wasn't a white actress, because okay. she wasn't. Because the, the comic book character is white, white. Yeah, white. yeah, yeah. Devoid of all color, mm-hmm. white. And I think it was that flip that people had a problem with. But again, it's like it's a movie still kind of sort of grounded in a reality of some kind. Yeah. So it made sense. Hmm. And also, I mean, there's going to be some liberties taken. Yeah. That was a liberty. So I was okay with it. I didn't mind it at all. I thought it was really cool. Uh, Your thoughts? Uh, I didn't hate it. Which I, mm. I, I think when I start movies, that's my first thing I say about movies. <laughs> I didn't hate it, but it didn't feel as magical as one mm-hmm. to me personally. I love the meta. I love the self-awareness, the uh, self-defacing, the referencing a bunch of crap. But it just felt like it was missing something. I don't know if it was the the plot, the subplot with him and Vanessa that kind of was dragging mm-hmm. me down a bit, but... I had a great time. It went by really fast. It was a lot of fun, but something just felt off. For me, I would think what kind of felt off for me was the pacing. That could have been it too, yeah. Like it just kind of went in a quick spurt, stopped for a few moments, went in a quick spurt, Uh stopped for a few moments. Because we started fast, and then we had scene with Vanessa. Then it started fast again. Then we had scene in prison. That it started fat, you know, it was just like boom, yeah. So I think that's probably what it was for me. I think I think the ebb and flow, the ebbs, just kind of kind of really, I won't say were dragging the movie down because they weren't, mm-hmm. but they were just throwing it off a little bit. Mm-hmm. But that was my only uh, qualm with the movie. Otherwise, I thought it was great and uh, definitely had the spirit of one. And what I know of the comics, like you said, it had the spirit of the comics. So I uh, thought they did a really good job. All right. What was your favorite scene? My favorite scene was probably the intro, the uh, mm, mm-hmm. the James Bond. Yeah, yeah. Intro. Yep. Like that—that that was just fantastic. Uh-huh. Done. Runner up is Yukio. Okay. Just in the fact that every single time that she appeared, <laughs> they did that entire exchange of, yeah. hi, Wade. Hi, Yukio. Hi, Yukio. <laughs> <laughs> and he was always nice to her. Yeah, it was absolutely adorable. Uh-huh, uh-huh. <laughs> and yours. Did you watch the unrated one? No, I have not seen the unrated one, but okay. don't hold back. Okay. Because I, I don't care about spoilers. Right. So I don't know if this was in yours or not. Some of the stuff I do reference might not be in been in yours because I think mine was like 15 minutes longer mm-hmm. that's a lot of stuff uh, my absolute favorite scene I will also have runners up my absolute favorite scene was we had a shot from at the very end the mid credit scene or whatever we had a uh, Deadpool from X-Men Origins Wolverine standing there mm-hmm. and then all of a sudden a gun comes out and shoots him in the head <laughs> and it's Deadpool it's actual Deadpool and then Deadpool and uh, Logan have an exchange using old footage of Wolverine. Mm-hmm. It was so fucking cool. It was just, re- I mean, especially if you were a fan of Deadpool and the comics and that bastardized, horrible version that Ryan Reynolds was before. Mm-hmm. Just to see actual Deadpool shoot him in the head and then just walk into the frame was so cool. Yes. I-, I loved it. I loved it. 
Um, some honorable mentions was the James Bond intro. I thought it was really clever. Mm-hmm. And really fucking funny. Uh, I love the scene where he is uh, bitching about not having any more X-Men. And then there's a scene where they cut over to the side and you see Beast <laughs> slowly close the door. And then there's like... Uh, Quicksilver was there. Cyclops was there. Yeah. Like, like, so all the X-Men... Storms. Yeah. <laughs> so all the X-Men were there and he just closes the door like... Loved. I thought it was so fucking clever too. I loved it. And then not a scene, but kind of a thing... I loved Juggernaut's theme song. The gospel-y, churchy sounding, like, holy shit, holy shit. <laughs> that was so fucking awesome. That was something I was so, like, waiting for you to see it. Oh, okay. So that I could bring up, it's like, did you hear that score? <laughs> oh, God, it was such an awesome song. Juggernaut's th- song was just everything in that movie. It was great. And I remember being in the theater and watching, you know, the huge action scene going on. And I started to, you know, pay attention to music. And I was like, did they just sing holy shit? Yeah. (laughs) In a Latin tone? (laughs) I was watching. I'm like, same thing. I was like, wait. Oh, my God. This is awesome. (laughs) Yes. Yes. Uh, Speaking of, what was your holy shit moment? Holy shit moment. Hmm. I had it, but then I lost it. For right now, it's probably going to be X-Force. Okay, awesome. Yep. Because that was, at the time, watching it, totally unexpected. (laughs) X-Force. I love that fucking scene. I mean, and what I'm referencing is how they all die. Yeah. So funny. Shatterstar, my god. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, that was so funny. <laughs> what was yours? <laughs> my holy shit moment, um, because I avoid spoilers, and this is gonna sound really fucking weird. like how did how did how did you not know this? I completely blanked out on Domino being in this. Mm-hmm. So when Domino appeared as being interviewed for the X Force, I was like, <gasps> I'm like Domino! <laughs> I was excited. I really was. I wasn't expecting Domino, which you were like, she's on the fucking cover. I didn't see the cover. So I I am like really adept at avoiding all spoilers. I've gotten quite good at it. And I was going to say, by the way, like kudos to them on how they worked Domino's powers. Uh, yeah, I'm going to reference that later as well. Yeah. Uh, another holy shit moment for me was Juggernaut. Was not expecting mm-hmm. Juggernaut. And... Mm-hmm. It was actually a pretty badass. It wasn't like I'm Juggernaut, bitch. It was it was Juggernaut. Yeah, this was a far superior Juggernaut. I just love just like Juggernaut, just like I'm gonna shove this blank up his ass. <laughs> that cracked me the <laughs> fuck up. Look, I have it written down. Hold on. Yeah, it was pretty much I'm gonna shove this red guy up your ass. I'm gonna shove this bus <laughs> up your ass. Everything was shoving something up somebody's <laughs> ass. That was really fucking funny. A uh, minor holy shit moment was basically the dude getting decapitated by the lockers. Like, the lockers fell on this dude's head, and he just got decapitated. Oh, yeah. Was not expected. Yeah, I was like, that. whoa! <laughs> so as far as a moment, that's a that's a holy shit moment. But, uh, that was very violent. <laughs> yeah. All right. If any, mediocre moment. Um, For me, and I kind of referenced it earlier, mm-hmm. it wasn't so much a mediocre moment. It's just a series of moments where the pacing just kind of... Okay spurted at times uh mine is the very end credit scene Mm -hmm. i thought it was lame uh end credit scenes are usually known for being awesome and after a really blah one in my opinion of avengers infinity war this topped that in the meh factor it was basically deadpool still holding baby hitler and that was it ah that is exclusive to your cut the okay. super duper cut. Okay. Did you not have an end credit scene? I did. Oh. It just wasn't that. I had read that that was being added to the super duper cut. So uh, I know what you're talking about. What was yours? Mine was just him going through shooting um, Ryan Reynolds. Okay. okay. Shooting. Like Green Lantern. and did, Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, I think it was just those okay yeah 
I thought it was very uninspired. And after a really kick-ass movie full of cool shit, that's what you end on to prep us for three. Unless I'm missing something. Like with Infinity War, I don't see how Captain Marvel is going to be this awesome... How is she more awesome than every single fucking Avenger there? I don't know. Moving on. That's just mediocre. Uh, Minor mediocre moment for me was Cable saving Deadpool over going back to his family. Why would he do that? Why would he choose to save Deadpool and never see his family again over going back to his family after having pretty much won? Mm -hmm. That didn't sit well with me. I I, I don't read the comics. I don't know if that's in Cable's story or if that's part of his character. But from what I know and what I was watching, I didn't dig it. Didn't make sense. His mm-hmm. whole his whole entire thing was trying to save his family, so he could go back to them. What makes Deadpool so special? I don't know. Mm-hmm. All right, let's pick them. LOL moment. Oh goodness. Yeah. Um, mine is probably going to be that scene, that entire exchange between everyone when Deadpool is trying to glow, grow his legs back. <laughs> that was so creepy. And just how everyone was talking and how they filmed it. And, like, when he got off the couch and was, like, walking towards him. And yeah. T.J. Miller's like, look at him. Look at the little dude. <laughs> <laughs> that was so weird. Like, all of that was, that was just hilarious. And then you have Cable, who's just, like, very, like, stoic. He's just like, <laughs> can you stop that? <laughs> or whatever. It was great. Yeah, that was good. Uh, okay, this is going to be really cliche. Listen to me as I flip through my notes. My LOL moment are all the freaking awesome one-liners. Mm-hmm. And then I have a minor one after this. So bear with me. So one-liners such as, I was fighting a caped badass, and then we found out his name, his mom's name was Martha too. <laughs> yes. Yes. I loved it. I was like, yes, fucking punch. Batman vs. Superman right in the fucking dick. I loved it. I laughed so hard. I butchered it, but you know what I'm trying to say. I laughed so hard. On the um, James Bond intro, it said the director was one of the guys who killed the dog in John Wick. <laughs> I fucking laughed so hard. Like That's so clever. I think when he lost his powers, he says, I'm a bow and arrow away from being Hawkeye. I was like, oh, nice. Later on, Deadpool says, what did I do to piss off a grumpy old fucker with a winter soldier arm? <laughs> also awesome I love okay, you mentioned uh, Domino's power I love Deadpool's ongoing rant about her imaginary powers <laughs> that whole scene where like they're trying to infiltrate that uh, cargo that, thing mm-hmm. his whole entire thing about oh you're going with your imaginary powers <laughs> I loved it I, I, I'm doing a, di- a disservice and it made me laugh really hard uh, he called her Black Black Widow I thought that was really funny. Uh, he says to um, Cable, zip it, Thanos. That's brilliant. That was fucking awesome. Uh, as far as a scene, I loved when uh, I think Colossus pretty much saves him. And he's starting to go to give him a blowjob. <laughs> I fucking just was dying. Because <laughs> he's just going down on Colossus. I love that they really played with Deadpool sexuality more. In this one, because I don't think they really touched on it in part one. They really went, like, full, he's, like, pansexual or whatever. Mm-hmm. Like, they went all in on it. And I remember I said to you before that I would hope that they would explore Deadpool's by more, you know, openly sexual side. They definitely did in this one, because the dude was pretty much grabbing Colossus's ass and trying to give him a blowjob. And, yeah, he was all about Colossus this entire movie. It was great. And then I think the last LOL moment, like, the funny thing that... I wrote down. There was a lot of them, of course. When he called a Negasonic Teenage Warhead 11. Yes. I was like, yeah. I clapped. I was like, awesome. Calling back to when she had a shaved head in one. Mm -hmm. So, which I think she was supposed to have a shaved head or whatever in this one too, but due to a movie commitment, she couldn't. Much like uh, Henry Cavill's mustache. Mm -hmm. One of those one-liners since you mentioned... Henry Cavill is when he's fighting Cable and he's like so dark. Are you sure you're not from the DC universe? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I just I love the little fucking jabs they took. Mm-hmm. It was so good. Um, and then a minor LOL moment was in the intro when Deadpool was fighting and he was a stripper. He was fighting in heels. Yeah. That was fucking yes. great. I I fucking laughed. I was like, That's so cool. Not to mention just 
doing the entire killing montage to Dolly Parton's nine to five. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Yep. I just pictured Dolly Parton just sitting back and watching this, and hopefully she was enjoying it. I could, I picture her laughing her ass off. Mm-hmm. Dolly seems like she's a cool chick. All right. Um, I'm gonna add one moment, a new moment, adorable moment. Uh, and this goes specifically to Dopinder when they were like, Dopinder, what's your superpower? And he says, courage. <laughs> I went, aw. <laughs> How fucking adorable is Dopinder? He's so fucking adorable. Like, ah. Uh, Agreed. <laughs> he's so cute. So cute. Just his little cute personality. I love Dopinder so much. All right. Anything else you'd like to add? You want to go to my notes? Notes is good. Phillips notes. All right. Uh, see what what didn't we talk about? I did have a. I, it wasn't really a holy shit moment, but in the beginning when he was trying to get revenge on that dude that killed Vanessa, mm-hmm. I thought it was kind of cool when he, like he hugged him and like turned into the bus and the bus hit them. Yeah. I was like, whoa! And just the look on his face when he did it, it was like this like solemn, somber look. Mm-hmm. I was like, okay, Deadpool, what's going on? Where are you going? And to touch upon it, I thought of a solid mediocre moment for me okay when deadpool had died and he was seeing vanessa Mm -hmm. and that entire you know in the apartment and he's normal blah 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 right and it just kind of as you said seemed off to me and he's wearing far too many clothes yes so yeah this should be a, a mandatory rhino reynolds is almost naked scene (laughs) <laughs> in every movie he's in. I, yeah, I agree. I, I got the Vanessa subplot, but it seemed really kind of wonky. Yeah, the, and, and I was also expecting, you know, the way that she kept on saying, your heart is in the wrong place. I kept ex- expecting to find out that, you know, when they put Deadpool back together, that, you know, his heart uh, was literally in the wrong place. Right, right. That would been cool. But, yeah, I think that would have been awesome. But, okay. Anyways. I did like the scene where the actor actually forgot his lines. It was at the at the bar scene with Weasel was there, and they were talking, and the big burly like biker looking dude <laughs> yeah. was talking, and he and he acted like he forgot his line and had to, like help him. Thought that was clever. I loved the entire sequence of Deadpool being in the X Men mansion. Yeah, he was riding at Professor X's chair, which I thought was really cool. I liked it when he said, "You think the studio would throw us a bone?" One that doesn't wind up in my mouth. And he looks at the camera. <laughs> that was great. Breaks the fourth wall. I did. I really liked that they made Negasonic Teenage Warhead gay. And mm-hmm. they just, it was just not a big deal. It was just part of the plot. Mm-hmm. Part of her character. I think them still having that weird, like, fucking confrontational uh, relationship between uh, her and Deadpool. But then having Yukio being so fucking nice. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> was really, really awesome. I did think it was interesting that they waited about a half hour to introduce Cable. Uh-huh. I thought that was pretty cool. Like, they waited a while to introduce the main bad guy. Well, quote-unquote main bad guy. So I did like that. And then, as we referenced earlier, I loved the toilet paper conversation between the two rednecks. I've had that literal conversation, almost word for word with people. And when he says, you know, use, like, wet wipes or whatever, I was like, yes, thank you. Get out of my brain. It was perfect. If you remind me, in Afterthoughts, I will tell my version of it. Okay. Because, yeah, I've, I've preached this for years, and people don't listen. And, yeah, I'm glad it was there. It was weird to hear, because it was like someone got into my brain and wrote it down on paper. But it was still awesome. I thought it was kind of funny when uh, Firefist says, when was the last time you saw a plus-size superhero? I was like, yeah, good call. Good call. Fair. Fair. It was weird for me because I don't read the comics. So I didn't know what to expect. I didn't know what Cable was at first. I'm like, mm-hmm. what are you? And I, had, I kind of made a Winter Soldier joke in my head. And then they made it later. I was like, yes, awesome. Thank you. I did like the scene where Deadpool got his arm broken, but then he's choking the dude with his broken arm. Oh, yeah. But that was really cool. <laughs> uh, I wasn't expecting Bill Skarsgård or Terry Crews to be in this. I think both those guys are awesome. Or Brad Pitt. Uh, meh, meh, meh. I don't care about Brad Pitt. Okay, so you know more about the comic stuff than I do. There's a scene where Juggernaut appears. Domino 
sees him, that she's like, ooh, and like backs up out of frame. Is there something there that I don't, I'm missing because I don't read the comics? There's like a relationship between them? No, no, that was just all, you know, Domino being <laughs> smart that oh, okay. there's no way I can take this fucker off. <laughs> okay, okay. I wasn't sure if there was like some kind of weird thing that I was missing. I did like the say anything scene, which we've seen in two movies now, Ready Player One and this one. Yes, yes. So that is all for my notes. Uh, anything else you'd like to add or you want to go to final thoughts? Final thoughts is good. Let's go to final thoughts. Go ahead and go first. What did you like overall final thoughts? Overall final thoughts is I still enjoyed the hell out of it. It mm-hmm. was a wild ride. And even though I'd already seen it, I was still laughing out loud at almost all the jokes. And I very much look forward to another one. Uh, my final thoughts were it was a lot of fun, even though it felt off in a way. It was like 5% off. Like if, if the movie was 100%, like 95% of it was fucking awesome. 5% mm-hmm. felt off. It was just enough to kind of like feel odd. Mm-hmm. But not nearly enough to take away from the movie. The dialogue was on point. It got so many brownie points across the board for the what it referenced and the things it made fun of from X-Men to, as we were saying, DC. I just, I'm killing off all of Ryan Reynolds' shitty roles was great mm-hmm. like it was just so fucking smart if you loved one you'll love to and yeah check it out if you haven't seen it already if you're like me and didn't see it in the theaters because you by the time you were able to see it it wasn't there anymore for some fucking reason and you haven't seen it yet check it out totally okay so that takes care of final thoughts but before we go as it pertains to deadpool 2 what did we learn you go first i learned that it never is not creepy when they have like this weird, creepy children subplot, I got huge creepy pedo vibes from Headmaster. Oh yeah, and like yeah. they they cast him really well. Like no offense to the actor, he does a good job. But at first one was like you know human children first. I'm like, what is going on? <laughs> it's like oh. then they showed the Headmaster. I was like, oh my god, what is going on? Then obviously I got it. There was an anti mutant thing. But yeah, it's it's never not creepy, so um, yuck. Mine is minor. I just, just I learned Yukio is adorable. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> I don't know. Dopender gives her a run for her money. True. He's fucking adorable too. He's adorable. He's so cute. He's so cute. If only his intro would always be "Hi Wade." <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hi Dopender. <laughs> All right, well, that wraps up this episode. Thank you for listening. Tell us what you thought on the movie in the comments below. What was the funniest moment or line in your opinion? If you liked the video, please hit the like button. Share it with your friends or cool people who might dig the VizCast. We're calling it VizCast now. Visual podcast, y'all. And please subscribe to the channel, including hitting that notification bell to stay up to date on the newest content. Speaking of our next episodes will be on the series Stranger Things 2. We recorded this way back in November. November 1st, 2nd, 3rd to be precise. And then I had a malfunction with my hard drive and I thought I lost them. I was able to recover them just uh, last month. So I will be getting on those, editing those, and those will be your VizCast Fair for the month of September as we prepare for our 31 Days of Horror part, like, five or six, I forget which year we're on now, which will be all of October. So look forward to that. So until then, once again, my name is Philip. And I'm TJ. And we will return next time to talk about Stranger Things Season 2. Goodbye. Bye.